Hi DIYers, this is Michael from Alarm Grid, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install the Honeywell Home Pro Takeover module inside a Honeywell Home Pro A7 Plus security system. Uh, this also applies to uh, Residio Pro A7 Plus C, uh, Honeywell Home Pro A7, and Residio Pro A7C. Um, all of these systems can support the Pro Takeover module. These are the Pro Series alarm panels from Honeywell Home and Residio. Um, so the reason you're adding a Pro Takeover module is so that you can use one of five legacy sensor frequencies with your system. That is, you can enroll legacy sensors, not encrypted sensors, older sensors, if you will, with your system. Maybe sensors that you have left over from before from an earlier security system and you want to continue using them with your Pro A7 Plus or other Pro Series alarm panel. Um, in our case, we're going to be setting it to zero so that way we can use Honeywell 5800 sensors with the system. And I'll, at the end of this video, I'll show you how you would enroll a Honeywell 5800 sensor after you have installed the Honeywell Home Pro Takeover module. Um, so before you get started, um, if you have your system monitored, um, please put it on test mode with the central station just to avoid causing any potential false, false alarms here. Um, they might be getting some incoming signals as far as AC loss, your panel being powered down. Um, so it's just a good idea to put your system on test mode first. Um, but anyway, um, so let's get into it here. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you, just because I have it in hand and I don't want to forget later, um, I do want to show you the dial on the Pro Takeover module. And you see right now we have it set to 2. Um, numbers 0 through 4 are used with the Pro A7 Plus and other Pro Series panels. Um, it's believed that 5 through 9 will be used with a future hybrid panel, top secret. Um, but uh, we, we haven't confirmed that yet. But um, each um, number 0 through 4, those five numbers, represents a different legacy sensor frequency. Um, so the one we're going to be using today is 0 for Honeywell 5800. So what I like to do to um, get it to adjust, I like to just take a, a flat object like this flathead screwdriver here, and then I can stick it in the, the hole, and I can sort of turn it. So that way it's at 0 now. You see we just turned it to 0 by um, putting it into the indented arrow, and the arrow is now facing 0. So we're good to go on that front. But um, let's get it installed inside the system. So the first thing we have to do is we have to open up the panel. And um, I do want to point out that this is the old backplate uh, for the system right here. Um, I, we already took it down. We already installed the Pro Takeover backplate that comes included with the system, um, comes included with the Pro Takeover module. And I'll point out the differences once the panel's um, off the wall. But um, you see that there's no antenna on this original stock backplate. You will have to remove the stock backplate and put on the Pro Takeover backplate. They have the, um, the screw holes in the same spot, so you can just screw it in the same spots as before. So that should be fairly simple. But I just wanted to point that out real quick. Um, the first thing we're going to do, we're actually going to cut AC power to the panel. And we have our transform right here. We're just going to go, and we're just going to unplug it, just like that. So now we have an AC loss condition on the system. We can just go and click that. And we won't worry about that right now. Um, if you have trouble reaching the transformer, you could instead cut power at the circuit breaker, drop power at the circuit breaker. Or you could, um, uh, if you have a Honeywell LT cable, you could undo the barrel connection. So various options there. But we have cut power to the blue terminal block that you'll see when I open up the panel. Anyway, uh, let's get into it. So we're going to switch this over to a Phillips head now. And we're going to undo the set screw at the bottom of the panel. So that way we can take it off the backplate. So let's go ahead and do that. We just uh, put that in there. And we're going to activate the tuxedo touch as we do that. Or this, just the tuxedo, that is. That's not the touch. But we're going to get out the set screw here. Just slowly but surely, we will get it removed. And we will carefully set that aside so we do not lose it. Now, uh, we can go ahead and we can take this off the, the backplate. So we can just kind of go around and just pull it off. Now, um, to finish power down the system, we're just going to undo the backup battery there. And now you see the system is fully powered down. Uh, it is no power at all, so we can't uh, use it at all. Um, but we want to do that before installing new hardware to avoid damaging the system or the new hardware. Uh, so our system is fully powered down. Now, I promised I would show you the backplate differences. Um, so we do have the Pro Takeover backplate already installed. You see that it has a, an antenna up here. Um, that gives the Pro Takeover module useful range. Without that backplate, um, you really won't have any useful wireless range. And, you won't have a good time using the module. So um, you see this is the um, stock one that doesn't have the, um, the antenna installed. Um, it doesn't have the antenna installed there. You see it doesn't. Um, so this one does. And um, you see we have cut power to this blue terminal block um, as we undid the transformer. We unplugged the transformer. So anyway, um, let's get it installed. Uh, we're going to bring the camera a bit closer, and we're going to do an up close of the installation for the Pro Takeover module. Uh, so one thing I do want to show you with the backplates, uh, you will have to move the, the blue terminal block from the old backplate to the 
pro take over backplate. Um, I find it's easiest, best to do this when they're not mounted on the wall, when they're just lying flat on a table or a desk. Um, so that way you can do it before mounting the backplate. Um, if you have a Honeywell LT cable, you might leave the wires attached, um, but you definitely do want to cut power to the terminal block when you do this. Um, you see we have no wires attached, we have ours. There's no power involved at all, so. Um, but it's it's pretty easy process. Um, so what I like to do, I like to take like a flathead screwdriver or a thin object and just kind of get in there. Um, and just you kind of pry it off. Um, you kind of have to get in there. And it's a bit tricky, but then you should just be able to pull it out once you get in there enough like that. And then so once you have it out, um, you can just apply it to the pro takeover backplate, the one with the antenna. You just want to get this little notch um, in there first, um, so that way it locks into place. Um, and like that, once you hear the click, then it's good. OK, we have the Pro A7 Plus panel down here, and we're going to install the pro takeover module. It's going to be installed uh, dial side up, so not this side. This side will be facing up. And it's going to be this side um, going to be inserted into the panel. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to take off the slot cover here. And we just pull that off, pry that off. And so we just insert it into the slot here. And it kind of snugly fits into place. And then once you have it installed, um, you can do the set screw. And remember to uh, adjust the dial before you go and do that. We did that earlier um, based on the frequency you're using. Um, so we're just going to screw that into place. And then we can reapply the slot cover on top. And there we go. We have installed the unit. And now we're going to um, mount it back on the back plate, the Pro Takeover back plate. Um, first, I'll go ahead and I'll reconnect the backup battery just so I don't forget to do it later. Um, the system won't power on until it's receiving AC power from the blue terminal block when it's receiving power. Um, then the system will power back on. But we have installed the Pro Takeover module. All right, we got the slot cover fully back on uh, the back cover of the Pro A7 Plus. So we can just go ahead and put it back on the back plate here. And uh, the system won't rec um, receive AC power until we plug the transformer back in, but we'll do that last. Um, I am going to uh, reapply the set screw. This is not to be confused with the set screw that we used with the Pro Takeover module. This is a slightly larger set screw. But we can just go ahead and insert it into the hole here carefully and screw it into place. If you have it on the back plate correctly, you should be able to get it all the way in like I just did. And there, we have our panel remounted back on the Pro Takeover backplate, not the original stock backplate. Remember, we swapped those out. Well, we didn't in this video, but you should um, use the one with the antenna, because otherwise the Pro Takeover module will not have useful range. So um, we're going to plug the transformer back in. It looks like it's caught on something there, but we can just go and plug that in. And you should see that the panel is uh, receiving AC power. And it is now going to go through the cycle process, the boot up process. We're just going to wait through that for a second. And then I will show you how you will enroll a Honeywell 5800 sensor. Remember, if you have your dial set to a different uh, number, then you will use a different uh, frequency. Um, so just to go over those real quick, um, like I said, 0 is Honeywell 5800. 1 is 2 gig, 345 megahertz. Um, I believe that 3 is 319 megahertz. Um, that might be DSC. Um, one of those is DSC. Um, 4 is DSC, if, if not, the 433 megahertz. And then number 4 is definitely the Bosch sensors. Um, those are the five uh, legacy frequencies that you can use. Um, you can check our FAQ. We'll have them all listed there for you. Um, like I said, Honeywell 1500, 2 gig, 345 megahertz, um, the 319, which is Qualsys, and Interlogix GE. And um, we also have the DSC 433 megahertz, the legacy DSC, and the Bosch. Anyway, our system is back online. Looks like I rambled long enough to get it to be reloaded. So uh, we have a Honeywell 5800 mini sensor here. And we're going to be enrolling that with our Pro A7 Plus with the Pro Takeover module installed and the dial on the Pro Takeover module set to 0 for Honeywell 5800 sensors. So we're at the main screen of our Pro A7 Plus. We're going to click the three horizontal bars hamburger button at the bottom. We're going to choose Tools, which is all the way at the bottom. We're going to enter in our installer code, which is set at the default, 4112. And then we're going to choose programming. Make sure that you have local programming mode on your panel. You need the high enough firmware version. Um, so you can request a firmware update to have it sent down to your panel. You will need a Wi-Fi connection to make that possible, to make that work. Uh, so the Pro A7 Plus and Pro A7 Plus C both have the Pro Wi-Fi ZW installed. If you have a Pro A7 or Pro A7C, you will need to install that Pro Wi-Fi ZW or the Pro Wi-Fi without Z-Wave control. But anyway, so make sure you have Wi-Fi. Make sure your panel has a backup battery uh, that's charged. Uh, make sure you don't have an AC loss condition. And make sure it's powered on and that it's actually monitored and connected to Wi-Fi. Anyway, so we're going to choose peripherals. 
All right, so we're at the peripheral screen now, and we're going to press the plus button in the upper right corner to get to the add a peripheral screen where we can auto enroll um, one of the Honeywell 5800 sensors or any sensor that's compatible with the system. So uh, we have a Honeywell 5800 mini and we're going to fault it and see if it wants to enroll. And there we go on the first try, we got it to work. Um, so um, I'm just gonna briefly go through these, um, these fields here. Uh, we have another video that goes into programming in more depth. So I'm just gonna do this very briefly. Uh, you see the sensor type 5800 and takeover. That is correct. This is a legacy sensor. It is using the pro takeover module. The serial number has been auto enrolled with the system. That is correct. We don't need to mess with it. Um, that's right there. You can check the serial number on your sensor if you want to confirm, but we're gonna leave that alone. Uh, you can set the partition if you want to, if you have multiple partitions enabled on the system. We're just gonna keep ours at partition one, P1 main. Uh, zone number, it's assigned the lowest available zone number. And actually um, every zone on the system can be used with either um, a legacy sensor or an encrypted sensor. Um, it's just a matter of them being assigned the lowest zone number. So depending on the order you enroll the sensors, uh, they can go into any one. Uh, just remember, you can't exceed 127 encrypted sensors or 123 legacy sensors. These are legacy sensors, so you can have up to 123 of these legacy sensor zones. Um, the service, that's referring to the loop number, if you need to change the loop number for your sensor. Um, for this one, it's fine. It does use loop number one, the 5800 mini. If you're using something like a 5816, then it would use loop number one for the... Uh, the not the read switch for the wireless uh, transmitter function. Um, that's what loop number one would be, and loop number two on that would be for the read switch, the door and window contact function. But that's a different sensor. But we're gonna so we're just gonna leave that on service one, loop number one, for the 5800 mini. Uh, for zone descriptions one and two, this is what the panel will speak out if um, when the sensor is faulted. Uh, let's do something like uh, we'll just give it a funny name here. We'll call it sprinkler. We'll, we'll do the sprinkler door. And um, so we're going to leave zone description two blank. Um, now device type, it's, it's going to read the zone descriptor and the device type, um, unless you set the device type to other, which is actually a useful trick because if you set it to other, then you can have access to every single response type, um, every possible response type. So that's kind of cool here, but we're fine with door. So when this one's faulted, it will say sprinkler door. Um, and we'll hear that at the end. Response type, that's actually um, how the system responds when the sensor is faulted. In our case, we'll keep ours at entry exit one. That's going to mean if the system is armed, armed stay or armed away, and we fault this sensor, then it's going to trigger an entry delay countdown and we have to disarm the system before that countdown expires or else an alarm will occur. So an entry exit zone is usually one for coming and going like your front door, your back door, maybe your garage door. Um, so that way you have a chance to disarm because you know, you know you're normally coming and going through there. So it's normal. Um, so. Uh, but you do have to uh, disarm in time. So make sure you know your code. And if an intruder doesn't know the code, then they'll have an alarm triggered on them, which is what we want. Supervised. Um, so the system's going to listen for um, a check-in signal from the sensor periodically um, just to make sure it's working properly. Um, some reasons for a supervision loss. Uh, the sensor powers down due to a dead battery. Uh, you put up a, a new obstacle, maybe some new walling um, so or a large metal object, and the signal can't reach the panel, then you might get supervision trouble. So. You can keep that enabled if you want to. We'll keep ours enabled. Alarm report, that's going to, um, if, if this zone causes an alarm on the system, then if the system's monitored, it's going to send it um, you know, across the alarm net um, servers and it'll eventually reach the central station um, and or you directly if you're self-monitored um, through Total Connect 2.0, uh, text in or email. So um, that's, that's alarm report. If, you're, if your system's monitored, then you usually want to have this one enabled, unless it's just maybe a zone that you don't want to, um, you only want to have local notifications or a local alarm, a local siren um, on site, but you don't want to you know, have a central station involved or receiving the text and or email alerts, then you might turn alarm report off, but we'll keep ours on. Uh, version, that's just the firmware version for the sensor. You can't adjust it, you see it's grayed out. Um, so we'll leave that alone. Um, we have different chime options here. Um, if we click over here, we can set it to any one that we like. Uh, we'll keep ours at standard. You see there's also a disabled option if you don't want to chime. So but we'll keep ours at standard. And lastly, we have supervision time, which we cannot adjust. Um, this is how often the this, this system needs to receive the check-in signal if you have supervision enabled. It's set at 722 minutes, which equates to six hours. Um, so we're fine with that. And we've gone through every field. So we're going to click Save in the upper right here. And now we have our sensor enrolled. We're just going to go back out to the home screen. And I'm just going to fault the sensor real quick just to show you that we're not going to click on the weather. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just going to fault this real quick and just show you that it does. Well, I barely had to move it, but we'll do that again just to show you. And then you see it's open right now, and then it's closed. And there. <laughs> and there we go. We're going to set that down. And 
get it to where it's closed. I'm just positioning it down here so that way we see that it does close. Okay, there we go. So our sensor is closed. Now there is one last thing I wanted to tell you and it's very important. Um, with the Pro Takeover module, you can't use key fobs. Um, that's just a limitation of it. Um, anyway, that concludes the installation of the Pro Takeover module on the Honeywell Home Pro A7 Plus. Remember, this also applies to the other Pro Series panels. Um, that's how you install the Pro Takeover module. So if you have any questions about the Pro Takeover module, about the Honeywell Home Pro A7 Plus, or about alarm monitoring services in general, send an email to support at alarmgrid.com. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up below to like the video, and remember to subscribe to our channel for updates on future videos. We hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.